Welcome back. In the last lesson, we covered the creation and viewing of metrics in your Azure portal. What we're going to do here is get into the creation and viewing of metric alerts in Azure using the Azure portal. Now we're going to use, like we did in the previous lesson, we're going to use Azure Monitor. Now metric alerts in Azure Monitor allow you to be notified when certain metrics cross specific thresholds that you set. What we're going to do here is create a metrics alert rule that sends an email notification when a VM is deallocated. So you can see the process for creating an alert based on metrics specifics. So I'm in here in my, my resource group in my Azure portal. To configure the alerts that we want to configure, we're going to go over here in the left-hand pane and select monitor. Now we could also do it from the alerts section here under monitoring. But we'll go over to monitor. Start as a baseline here, I guess. So you can see here, we explored metrics earlier. And now what we're going to do here is set up an alert. Now this alert that we set up, when it sees a VM deallocate, it will send me an email notification. So we'll go ahead and click create alert here. And then when we do that, we need to supply some information. We need to tell the rule what resource we're looking to monitor. We need to look for the condition that's supposed to set the alert off. Any actions that the alert is supposed to generate. And then of course, details about the alert, essentially the alert rule name. So let's go ahead and select a resource here that we're gonna take a look at. When we do this, we can filter by subscription, by resource type, and by location. What I'm going to do here is filter my AZ-103 subscription on virtual machines. And then we can see here, I have my resource group that we're working with, and we're going to work with VM1 here. So we'll select VM1 and then click Done. So now what we're going to do essentially here is tell our rule that if VM1 deallocates, let us know. And that's what we're going to do here under condition. So we'll add a condition here. Now in this configure signal logic section, if you hover over signal type, you can see here that the signal types that are available for monitoring are gonna be based on the target. Uh, for example, if I'm monitoring a virtual network, I'm not going to be looking at percentage CPU, so that's not going to be available. Now, if we hover over monitor service, we can see that we can filter over different types of services, either platform or administration. Now, I'm going to filter on administration because I'm looking to see when a VM is deallocated. So we'll go ahead and select deallocate virtual machine. Now after selecting the deallocate virtual machine, I can select the chart period over the last week, six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours. We'll leave it over six hours as the default. At the bottom here, we can see the alert logic. Now what this condition preview tells me based on my configuration of my event level status and event initiated by, it's telling me here that whenever the administrative activity log deallocate virtual machine has any level with any status, and if the event is initiated by any person, it's going to fire. Now what I can do is I can change this configuration to critical error warning informational or verbose for the event level. I'm going to leave this set to all. Now for status, for this particular logic, I'm looking to see if it's failed, started, or succeeded. So I could change this rule to say, if a deallocation fails, let me know, or if a deallocation starts, or if it succeeds. I'm interested in all deallocations, whether they're successful or not. So I'm going to leave this at all. And then in this box here, I could configure if it's deallocated by a specific user, and I just provide that user information here. I'm going to leave this set to blank so it's any. So at this point, what's going to happen is if my VM1 is deallocated or attempted to be a deallocated, 
I'm going to get a notification. So we'll go ahead and click done here. So we have our resource and our condition configured. Now the action here is where we're going to configure that email. So we'll go ahead and click add here as an action. And then remember earlier we covered action groups. Well, this is, this is where you're going to use those action groups. So I can either create a new action group or I can select an existing action group. I already have an action group defined from the earlier demonstration. So I'll select him and go ahead and move forward. Now, this section here where it mentions the action rules, I'm not going to use that for this demonstration. But what I want to do is show you what these action rules are and why you would use them. So we'll click learn more here. And you can see here that what action rules do is they allow you to define and suppress actions. More often than not, as you can see here, you can use action rules to suppress alerts. And a typical scenario would be to suppress alerts during a planned maintenance window. You know, if you, you're monitoring your VMs and you're being notified when they're deallocated, but you have a maintenance window from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. every day, well, you don't want to be notified of a VM that's being taken down during that time if there's any maintenance being had done to it. So you would configure a suppression based on the action rule. And then, of course, down here, it gives you an explanation of how to create the, uh, the action rules. So let me bounce back over here. Since we're doing a, a one-off demonstration, I don't need to do any, any action rules here to suppress anything. So now that I have my action group configured here, I'll go ahead and click Done. So at this point, I'm monitoring VM1 for any deallocations. And then when that happens, I'm going to be notified at my action group. And if we go in and we select View Actions, we can see that it's emailed. So we'll cancel here. And then we'll give our alert rule a name. Just call it my alert rule. And then we'll save it in my resource group. And of course, we're going to enable the rule upon completion. Now notice here, it can take five minutes for an activity log alert rule to become active. I've actually seen this take five to 10 minutes in practice. So what I'm going to do here is create the rule and then I'll pause this video and we'll come back in a little bit and we'll deallocate our VM and then I'll show you the email that comes through. So we'll go ahead and create our alert. And we can see that it's been successfully created. Now what I wanna do here is bounce into my resource group here and fire up my VM. And then what we'll do is I'll deallocate it and then we'll, we'll watch the, the email come through. What I'm going to do now, since my machine has been up and running for a few minutes, I'm going to stop the VM and let it deallocate. And then what I'll do is I'll open up my email and you'll see the notification that I received telling me that my VM has been deallocated. And while this is deallocating, I'll fire up my Outlook client over here on my other screen. Okay, it's been a few minutes, and what I'm going to do here is drag over the email I received from Azure Monitor. And we can see here we received an important notice that Azure Monitor Alert, My Alert Rule was activated. And it gives me the activity log alert that was fired, when it was fired, the category, along with the operation name. And it tells me that it's informational and then points me to the resource ID that actually generated it. So this is the type of alert that you would receive after you've configured alerts for your metrics. And I'll minimize this. And we'll go back and we'll take a look at the new alerts that came in. So we can see here my alert rule. We can see that it's in the fired condition, which means it's been sent. And again, it provides me basically the same information it provided in my email. Although it's a little bit cleaner format here.
Now from here, I can look at the history for this alert along with any diagnostic information. Now there's really no diagnostic information here because it's just a deallocation of a VM. So if we go back to summary here, what we can do is change the alert state from instead of showing new, we can actually set this to closed or acknowledged. So we'll close this. And of course we could enter a comment here that we checked it out and we can okay it. We'll close this notification here, close our box and refresh here. And eventually we'll see the alert state go to closed. And there we have it. So we'll open up the second one here. I actually started and stopped the VM a few times just to make sure it captured it. And again, we'll change the alert state here and we'll close it. And we still see another alert coming through here. Again, this is because we stopped and started the VM a few times, but you get the picture. So that is how you set up an alert that's based on metrics so you can be notified when something goes awry in your Azure portal. So we'll call it a wrap here and I'll see you over in the next lesson.